Welcome to the sixth Sunday of Easter and also the baptism of Kaden Lee and Nellie May. Um, uh, for announcements this week, I have several. On sad notes, Barb May passed away. She was related to um, Lisa Kaufman, her, the family that she had married into. And then uh, Nancy Stone Road's mother, Irene Schomper, passed this week. Her funeral will be this Friday. Uh, visitation from 10 to 11, and the service will start at 11. The other thing is, um, we collected over $580 for the Lifeline Pregnancy and Family Counseling Center in Millersburg. And that's an improvement over last year. I think the first year I started it was 200 and something. Last year we collected 400 and something. The other thing I wanted to share was the pot pie lasted until 5 p.m. We started at um, 3 and it lasted till 5. And they had good sales and it was delicious. And thank you for coming out and supporting St. Peter Lutheran Church on Tuesday. And I hope you voted. Do we have any announcements from you all to share? You know, there's a ladies' aid meeting this week, this Wednesday, at 6.30. And I have two more. Greta, she's going to help to remind me. Um, our first hymn will not be as printed in the bulletin. We'll be singing hymn, what's the number? 770. 770. And it will be, uh, I was there to hear your morning cry, which we usually play for baptisms because it's so awesome. And we sometimes play it for funerals. Um, and the other one is what? Next Sunday. Yes. yes, next Sunday. We have a joint service. So there will be just one service at 10 a.m. at St. Peter's Pavilion. That will be outdoor. We'll get to hear the birds singing, and that will be very nice. I also want you to pray for the baby robins that have hatched in the nest that was on the wreath here in our meditation garden. Since they don't know how to fly like a, uh, a Harrier jet, and fly straight up. They're going to have a hard time fledging. So please pray for them. Any other concerns or announcements from you all? All right. I see Nellie was raising her hand, but we know her part's coming up. All right, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We'll stand and sing our entrance hymn, and as the hymn is finishing up, I'll ask everyone involved in the baptism, that is parents, children, and godparents, to come forward.
In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Once born children of a fallen humanity in the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God who inherit eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we're made members of the church, the body of Christ. As we live with him and among his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to God's will. Who presents Nellie May to receive the sacrament of holy baptism? We do. Nina and Ethan, listen closely. In Christian love, you present this child for holy baptism. You should, therefore, faithfully bring her to services in God's house. Teach her the Lord's Prayer, Creed, and Ten Commandments. As she grows, you should place the Holy Scriptures in her hands and provide instruction for her in the Christian faith, so that living in the covenant of her baptism and in communion with the Church, she may lead a godly life all her days. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? We do. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water, you nourish and sustain all living things. By flood waters, you condemned the wicked, but saved those you chose who believed in you, Noah and his family. You led Israel by a pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery into freedom of the promised land. In waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By his death and resurrection, your beloved son set us free from bondage to sin and death and opened the way to joy and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit so that the one baptized here may be given new life. Wash away the sin of she who is cleansed by this water. Bring her forth as an inheritor of your glorious kingdom. To you be praise, honor, and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ, in unity with the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Um, all of you can participate with the congregation here. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered and Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the land of the dead, and on the third day he rose. Ascended to heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Warm. You guys say amen. Good job, honey. Good job. The Lord be with you. Are you ready? Get this do we do the next part? Okay. 
God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to new life through this holy sacrament. Pour your Holy Spirit upon Nellie May, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Okay, here comes the last part. It's like the bow in the present. Ready? She wants to swing it, I can tell. Okay, here we go. Nellie May, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. You guys say amen. Amen. Okay, here we go. Here comes one more part. Watch. She's taking it all in. She says, what are you going to do to me now? Paint my nails? <laughs> Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, giver of life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child, her relatives and friends. Let this family ever rejoice in the gifts you've given them. Make Nina and Ethan teachers and examples of righteousness. Strengthen them in their own baptism so they may eternally share salvation with those they love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Through baptism, God has made Nellie May our new sister, a member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus. May we proclaim the praise of God, bear God's creator redeeming word, and offer God's life-giving, powerful love to all the world. Nellie May. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father, and a worker with us in the kingdom of God. The peace of the Lord be with you always. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to new life through this holy sacrament. Pour your Holy Spirit upon me and me, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence.
Hayden Lee, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. You guys say amen. amen. Good. So shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You know what? I just realized that I didn't do a part that I wanted to do. Sorry. You guys, I'm going to back up. There's so many words to this. I hate to like make people sit through a bunch of reading. But I don't want to, I don't want to miss this part. Who presents Hayden Lee to receive the sacrament of holy baptism? And Katie, right? And, and Dwight. <laughs> Listen closely. In Christian love, you present this child for holy baptism. You should, therefore, faithfully bring her to services in God's house. <laughs> Teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and Ten Commandments. As she grows, you should place the Holy Scriptures in her hands and provide instruction for her in the Christian faith, so that living in the covenant of her baptism and in communion with the Church, she may lead a godly life all her days. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? pray. O oh God, giver of all life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child, her friends and relatives. Let this family ever rejoice in the gifts that you've given them and make Casey and Bo, Nina, Dwight, and Katie teachers and examples of righteousness. Strengthen them in their own baptism so they may eternally share salvation with those they love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through baptism, God has made Hayden Lee our new sister, a member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus. May we proclaim the praise of God, bear God's creative, redeeming word, and offer God's life-giving, powerful love to all the world. Hayden Lee, we welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father, and a worker with us for the kingdom of God. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. You want to close this? separate baptism, but not reading, making everyone sit through all that reading at the same time. So I hope it wasn't too disjointed for you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. One holy, almighty, and ever-loving God. We are on page four, and I'm going to ask you to say what's in bold.
Today's first reading comes from Acts 16, 9 through 15. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us, oh, us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace. The following day to Neopolis and from there to Philippi, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia in a road colony. We remained in the city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we were supposed, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who we had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Tyra, and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to the faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home, and she prevail upon us. Next reading. Please join me in reciting Psalm 67 together, responsibly by verse. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. Our second reading this morning comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 21 and chapter 22. And in the spirit of, I'm sorry, and in the spirit, one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it. Nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, the brightest crystal, flowering from the throne of God and the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore. But the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and His servants will worship Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Here ends our second reading. Our gospel affirmation will be spoken as printed in the bulletin. Hallelujah. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Please stand as you're able for a reading of the gospel. From St. John, the fifth chapter. Later, Jesus went to Jerusalem for a special feast. In Jerusalem, there is a pool with five covered porches, which is called the... Bethesda in the Hebrew language. This pool is near the Sheep Gate. Many sick people were lying on the porches beside the pool. Some were blind, some were crippled, and some were paralyzed, and they waited for the water to move. Sometimes an angel of the Lord came down to the pool and stirred up the water. After the angel did this, the first person to go into the pool was healed from any sickness he had. A man was lying there who had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw the man and knew that he had been sick for such a long time, Jesus asked him, 
Do you want to be well? The sick man answered, Sir, there's no one to help me get into the pool when the water starts moving. While I'm coming to the water, someone else always gets in before me. Then Jesus said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. And immediately the man was well. He picked up his mat and began to walk. The day this happened was a Sabbath day. The Gospel of our Lord. I'd like to invite the children to come down. And after that, it, um, you would be dismissed to Sunday school. Sometimes we forget that. I was going to talk to Miles about a little bit about what happened in preschool this week. In preschool, all the children got their whole bodies traced on a big piece of paper. Did you ever do that in your preschool? Now, Miles, could you trace your own body on paper? Could you lay on the paper and draw around it at the same time? No, you couldn't. But when Pastor Brody asked Miles if he wanted help drawing on his clothes or filling in, Coloring it, what did you tell me? Dad said, do you want some help? And what did you say? No. no, thanks. He said, I can do it. And that's what we learn to do our whole lives, right? We say, I can do it, right? Did you ever go to do something? And like, if I said, can I help you put on your shoes, Deacon? You'd say, no, I can do it, right? And we practice saying, I can do it our whole lives. And then... When we get to something we can't do, we forget to ask God for help. Do you ever ask God for help? Do you? That's good. And that's called saying a prayer, right? When you ask God for help? Good job. Can we, sit, can we put our hands together and say a prayer together now? Okay, you, we'll do a repeat after me prayer. Dear Lord, Dear Lord. please help us and please... Remind us that you want us to ask you for help. Please remind us that you want us to ask you for help. And please help our parents ask for help. Please help our parents ask for help. And thank you for always being there. Thank you for always being there. 
We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen. Um, Good job. Now you can go to Sunday school. The teacher is right over there, Miss Katie. Do you have to be potty trained to go? <laughs> At the beginning of the preschool year, it was, you know, they needed help with everything. They needed help to write their names. They needed help to hang up their coats. Now, at the end of the school year, they don't need your help. Say, I can do it. It seems like a strange setup at this place called Bethesda. There's sick people who have to wait and then compete for some rare opportunity for the waters to stir. There's a song that my son sang, uh, how I wish I could get him in church to sing it again. But in his baritone voice, he would he sang, Wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait in the water. God's going to trouble the water. So the people would have to pray that the water was going to be stirred, that their chance would come, but then they would have to be first. One poor guy's been lying there, sick for 38 years. No wonder Jesus felt bad for him and asked if he actually wanted to get well. Once before, I mentioned a seminary exercise where students were blindfolded and led several blocks. With arms outstretched, our hands were placed on the shoulders of the person in front, and we were steered into a maze, then separated. Little did we know that there was, in fact, no exit to this maze. One by one, each student who previously surrounded me fell silent and everyone seemed to disappear. I grew increasingly frustrated and angry because I'm not one for pranks or games of this sort and was ready to quit. One of the leaders came and spoke to me. What do you want, Nancy? Well, I grew even more angry knowing that the one asking was the one who chose this game. They knew the answer. Through tears, I said to get out of here. I was blindfolded and alone as far as I knew, but the reason I didn't whip off the blindfold was because I knew there was a solution and I wanted to discover it myself. Soon a different voice approached and asked, What do you want, Nancy? This was a familiar voice, one I trusted, belonging to a classmate named Elizabeth. And I answered for you to help me. And immediately I was whisked out of the maze to join everyone else. Indeed, I was the last person left in the maze. And if the aim of the game and exercise was to prove how hard it is for some people to ask for help, rather than fail at doing it themselves, I'd certainly proven the point. What made me mad was that the situation was contrived. Only moments before they'd impressed upon us the idea of relying on and trusting each other. And in this instance, they removed our ability to even communicate or work cooperatively. Apparently, there was no cooperative effort that prioritized carrying the sick man into the water for 38 years. And even when it comes to baptizing babies, there's often a cooperative effort. Tradition itself, along with various family, friends, and clergy members, play their part. So it's true for most of us that our arrival at the font is very similar to being healed at the waters of Bethesda. We had to rely on the willingness of another person to carry us there. But what is also true for most of us is that the thing we dread more than all else is becoming dependent like that again. God forbid we should become like the man at the pool of Siloam, without means to help ourselves, unable to compete, stuck for decades without making progress, 
Isn't it the truth? The pride is built on helping ourselves, being able to compete and achieving a goal, making progress or at least maintaining our status. Everything is geared to make us think this way, even religion. <coughs> when speaking to other Christians, we always disagree on one point. That is whether we choose or depend upon grace to even make that initial choice. In our first reading it says, that the Lord opened Lydia's heart so she would listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. And just one sentence later, we turn it into a thing about whether she's judged faithful enough for Paul and his companions to stay with her. We just can't get over the fact that we have to do something. The man sounds like me during that blindfold experiment in our gospel lesson. He doesn't say to Jesus, I want your help. He instead, he explains why he hasn't been able to help himself, that no one else has been willing to help him either. Jesus extends an invitation, and the invitation itself does the healing. He invites him to stand up, pick up his mat, and walk, because immediately he was well. He didn't need to wait for the water to stir or to travel into its depths. So Jesus proved that the Sabbath and baptism are not about ritual. It's about extending compassion and healing that transcends one moment in time. The purpose of healing a lame man was not so he could walk into the water. The purpose of healing a blind person was not so they could see the pool's edge. The purpose of healing was restoration. Baptism in the communion of saints is not a celebration of a single event. It's a celebration that lasts a lifetime. It's healing and restoration that's ongoingly available. Did I just make up that word? I think I did. How we choose to live afterward is a result of grace and is still dependent upon grace because the Lord is the one who makes the healing and the restoration possible. In our prayers of intercession, we'll repeat that again and again. In Luke 5, 24, Jesus says to the man that was paralyzed, rise, pick up your bed and go home. He says this to show he had authority on earth to forgive sins. So baptism, confession, and forgiveness are not about ritual, but about a continuing effect of healing. If there hasn't already been so, there will be times in your life that you'll be unable to choose for yourself and incapable of arriving on your own two feet, unable to compete, or will know that you'll never be first. But at those times, someone who loves you, a comrade, a companion, a spouse, or even maybe a stranger, will choose to carry your body towards waters of mercy, to a place where you'll find healing. May we always realize that it was God who came where we are and extended the invitation. The Sabbath, in this case, represents every time where there's a tendency to follow rules rather than act compassionately, where there's a tendency to worry about our own chance of being healed, where we fail to realize that by bringing a person to a place where they could be healed, that we're also literally before the place of renewal. Already there's a big stir in my neighborhood. There's an old firehouse that a group who works with the homeless would like to convert into a day center where nothing would be offered but a place to shower and some counseling and minimally compassionate care. There's already dozens of responses on the social media um, site called Next Door. Everything from why would we want that in our neighborhood 
to, it's the least we can do. There is a homeless encampment near where we live, and about 83 people, is what they say, live there, although you don't see more than one or two at a time. The hotel where we live is also um, home temporarily to many homeless persons. So it will be very interesting when we have the meeting this Wednesday to see just how strong the emotions are and whether we will try to control the situation and worry about our own chance in life and fail to realize that other people are in need. Jesus could have gone to this pool down by the end where the water is. It was a rock-cut, rain-filled cistern, about 55 feet long and 12 feet broad, approached by a steep and winding flight of steps. Had Jesus wanted to check out the pool himself, he'd have gone where the water was, and could have stirred it and waited to see who would arrive first. He could have stood there waiting to congratulate the winner. To offer them a high five, and that would have been easier and more in line with what most people do, where some win, some lose. But being Jesus, he chose to see who had gathered in need, who was waiting their turn, who had waited a while and were still suffering. Who could he help while he was there? Do you wish to be healed? Are you convinced that you can get there on your own, whatever that means to you? To get better, to get farther, or just get by? How long will you try under your own power, by your own wits, or in weight of another person's consideration? God knows that the hardest people to help are the ones who feel capable of doing it themselves. The guy at the pool may not have answered the question right. He started his conversation with Jesus by complaining and describing the disadvantage of being who he was. And Jesus listened. And Jesus invited. And Jesus healed. Sometimes healing comes from just being heard. As I discovered at the end of the blindfold experiment, I was still upset. But my classmates and the instructors listened as I explained the unnecessary harm that they had caused. And I learned that my expectations assume certain parameters that not everyone agrees with. That my motivations and desired outcomes don't always match that of the larger group to which I belong. Who do you know that's been waiting decades for circumstances to change. Perhaps they've been waiting generations. Who gathers or protests these days around a place hoping for mercy? Who is powerless, that is, not able to help themselves? Will we blame them for their misfortune or help them reach their goal? When Jesus asked, well, do you really want to be well? He was not aiming for a certain response. He truly wished to know what was needed before he helped grant the wish. Let us pray. Lord, we thank God that your mercy and love for us is not intermittent like a bubbling spring or hard to approach like the pool of Bethesda. We thank you that there's no weight or competition among us for your attention or for healing. We come to you now admitting a need. We may not even be able to name it, but you know how we suffer from some ailment we cannot cure. Guide us to where other people hurt, and through us may your presence offer them a chance to experience healing for the rest of their lives. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray for the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. God, you are the giver of new life and the one who holds all possibilities for renewal. Open your church to the unexpected ways your Holy Spirit works. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders envisioning partnership and planning. Surround us with your peace. God, in your mercy. Keep your prayer. God, you are the giver of new life and the one who holds all possibilities for renewal. Heal and save the earth while supplying abundance. Assist farmers, laborers, and gardeners who aim to grow, raise, and harvest in every season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God, in your mercy. Keep your prayer. Giver of new life and one who holds all possibility for renewal. Shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. And those in power wield power like a weapon confound their ways. Make them yield to your humble authority. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Giver of new life and one who holds all possibility for renewal. Give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, and peace, especially victims of war, crime, and violence. Create places where people can live and experience relief from struggle, rejection, and pain. May they find your loving presence and wholeness. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Giver of new life and one who holds all possibility for renewal. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experiencing poverty, addiction, homelessness, incarceration, dramatic change, and persistent stuckness that helps keeps them on the margins. Accomplish your will through human efforts. God in your mercy. Amen. Thank you for bringing Nellie Bay and Hayden Lee to the waters of baptism. Continue to gather your people at rivers, streams, and ponds where families, friends, and neighbors can remember their own baptisms. Give us the pleasure of welcoming others into the communion of saints. Assemble us together with those who died when we meet at your river of eternal life. Comfort the family of Irene Shopper and Barb May upon, upon their passing. God, in your mercy. <coughs> giver of new life, and one who holds all possibility for renewal. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers, and renew us by your Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Savior.
boat. There are maybe three people that live near me in Shaikov. It's that they live under the overpass of 80. Uh, they live in the under the overpass of Route 83. See how rumors can get started so badly. Also, it's not the hotel where we live. Oh. <laughs> It's in our neighborhood. We live in a, we live in a house. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that, Steve. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh, my. I also forgot to do the birthdays today. Please say happy birthday to Allie Jury on the 24th. And I'm naming the people that I, that I know. Carol Stone Road on the 26th. David Farner, Sr., me on Friday and Sarah Stone Road on the 28th. Our May anniversaries are Dennis and Nicole Custer and Richard and Cheryl Smick and then Wesley and Victoria McDonald. Let's all pray together in one voice saying something we're sure not to mess up. That is the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. God, the giver of life, the author of life, and Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Sunday, the Cub Scout troop, or den, what do you call it? The Cub Scouts, who meet in our building every week, will be uh, participating in a Sunday service that's kind of geared towards Memorial Day. They'll be doing a demonstration of the flag folding and, and helping out in other ways. And also the service itself will be leaning towards Memorial Day. Now go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thank you, God.